Welcome to Living Mask Free. I'm Michael Birdiewait, and today we're going to talk about being a tattletale. I know it's been a while since you've heard that term. I probably just took you back to your youth. But being a tattletale is something that I remember as a kid was a bad thing. It's if you say a truth that the kids don't want you to say. Well, that's a mask. And I'm all about living and leading mask free. And I want to take you back in a story and show you a moment as an adult where I had to be a tattletale. And I want this to give you the courage to speak up even when you think the people around you want you not to. So I'm in rehab. That's how most of my stories uh, start is something about drug addiction or recovery or something like that. But I'm in rehab and I've been living a life where I've been wearing a mask and I'm in rehab with all these other addicts and we've all been wearing masks too. And we get taught that we need to take our masks off. Well, about 12 days into rehab, I really want to get and stay clean. And so I'm taking the program really seriously. And I find out that the people next door to me are actually drinking and using drugs. And I realize that while I don't necessarily care what they're doing in terms of their life, I'm scared that knowing it's right there, I'll go use it too. So I go to a counselor's office and I realize I need to tell them I need to essentially be a tattletale because I need the alcohol and drugs out of my rehab so that I can continue to get and stay clean. And so I'm telling the counselor and I sit down and I'm nervous and I'm shaking and I'm starting to tell him like, oh, well, there are some people and they have some alcohol and some drugs and I'm talking about them in this really vague sense. And the therapist goes, okay, Michael, well, why don't you tell me what these people are using? And she keeps doing this. And I'm like, what do you mean people? It's, it's people in the center. And she's like, sure, these people. And it dawns on me. She thinks I'm talking about myself. She thinks I'm telling on myself. And then I realize I have an out. I have to explain this either way, but I, I also started to cry. So all weird emotions going on, it's weird. And I realize I'm terrified of what the other people are gonna think of me based off of me telling the counselor because it occurs to me that I have to be super clear on who the people are that are using. I thought I could be general. So I'm like, no, it's, and I don't even remember their names now, but I say the names of the people and she's like, oh, okay, well, thank you for bringing this up to us. And I'm shaking because I don't know what's gonna to happen to me in the pack, in the tribe, in the group of addicts. And I also almost got kicked out of rehab for being a tattletale because they thought I was talking about myself. So anyhow, the person gets kicked out. The main person that had all the alcohol and drugs gets kicked out and I'm walking around scared because I just said a truth that I know the other people might not like me saying. And then they hold an all addicts meeting. It's really interesting when a bunch of addicts in rehab decide to self-organize and have their own meeting. But we have an addicts only meeting and this guy that was like this tough guy that thought he was all hard said, all right, we gotta find out who the snitch is here because we can't have everybody here talking about what the other addicts are doing. And they're talking about how it's bad and all this kind of stuff and finally, I'm scared again and I speak up there and I say, you know what? I'm the one that did it. And in that moment, I didn't know what would happen next. And I didn't know, like I could get hurt physically. I didn't know what would happen to me so in terms of social structure. I didn't know what would happen. And the guy goes, what? And then before I can say anything, another guy stands up and says, if he hadn't done it, I was going to do it too. I'm here to save my life. And I don't need that stuff here. I'm glad he did it. And suddenly other people start saying the same thing. And I realized I'd said the thing and I did the thing that people were scared to because other people are going to try to intimidate them to not do it. Now, the part of the story that's probably not the best thing to share with you is that a guy uh, threatened me with a knife afterwards. But I don't think that's what's going to happen for you. If you're in a business meeting or like at a PTA meeting and you say the hard thing, I doubt someone's going to say, I have a knife in my room and you better watch yourself. That's probably not going to happen. But the fear is probably similar. And so what you can take from this is when you have the strength 
to live and lead mask free and say the truth no matter what. You are not being a tattletale. You're not being a, a, a whistleblower. You're not being someone that doesn't care about the other people. If you are doing what is true to yourself and word in action and operating in your integrity, you are living and leading mask free and you will be surprised at how much that inspires other people to do the same and who's gonna come and be behind you when you do it because being a leader is being willing to take an unpopular stance. So as you go out into your life, whether it's personal, professional, online, whatever, I want you to speak your mind and not be concerned about what the other people think because you might not just be leading yourself, you might be leading the people that are watching you. I want you to share your experience with me, go on my social channels, share it with me on there, or send me a direct message. And if you want more resources on how to live and lead mask-free, go to michaelbrodyweight.com.